Welcome to Theoretical Nonsense, the Big Bang Theory Watch Along Podcast. No PhD required. We're the podcast that recaps all the episodes of the Big Bang Theory. No spoilers. So hop into your favorite spot, make yourself a grasshopper, and, and enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. So welcome to our bonus episode where we are discussing Across the Spider-Verse. Ryan and I watched Spider-Man. the new <laughs> Spider-Man, and we just kind of want to share our thoughts and opinions on it. So this is a bonus episode. If y'all love this bonus episode where Ryan and I kind of just talk like 10 to 20 minutes about a new movie or a TV show, let us know. Maybe we'll just keep doing it. Maybe we'll actually watch a Star Trek. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Anything can happen. <laughs> Anything can happen right now. <laughs> well, we watched Across the Spider-Verse. It was very relevant because in our previous episode, where we watched the Hofstadter isotope, we talked a lot about Spider-Man. So if you haven't checked out that, that episode, check it out now. Well, maybe after this episode. But check it out at some point. But we want, we were inspired to talk about Across the Spider-Verse because of our IQ point on Spider-Man. But to know more about that, you should listen to that episode. It's a good episode. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? Bonus episode. We'll keep it brief. We'll keep it short. Let's just dive in. Across the Spider-Verse. And we will be going into full spoilers. So if you haven't watched the movie yet and you... Don't want to be spoiled. Stop now. Watch the movie and come back right here. Ryan, take us away. You know, uh, when Spider-Man um, Into the Spider-Verse came out, I I didn't even know what it was. Uh, and I saw a preview. I'm like, oh, they're making an animated sh uh, feature. And I was thinking of something like the batman and animated features or even the constantine and animated features which are fun but most of them go straight to dvd or straight to video uh and i watched into the spider verse i'm like that is and it's right its own spider-man feature film and this one across the spider verse blew me away i loved it it is uh, a contender for one of my top spider-man films right now it really is like this was incredible on so many levels like even if you don't like or do a lot of animated stuff this is done so well it's mind-blowing it's uh, like it's artistic you know they're uh, different art styles for each universe works for me i love it uh and so like each universe gets their own particular theme and style and it, uh, yeah, but uh, it is beautiful and wonderfully done. Masterfully done. Like, it has everything. It has comedy, it has action, it has heart. I actually almost cried at a couple of points. And right? I was like, wow, this is, like, so moving. It's like, it, I, I guess it hits me a little harder as, like, a new parent. Mm -hmm. Like, to see, like, the parental side of things. Of, like, knowing the side of Miles as the child that's trying to be the hero, but also as the parent and everything and how you only want what's best for your child and things like that. It kind of hit me a little differently this time around, and but I think a big part of it for me, uh, you know, the parent aspect, uh, the relationship aspect in general that, you know, there's one person, the spot played by, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jason, Jason Schwartz. Yeah. Uh, which have you ever heard of the band uh, Phantom Planet? Yeah, uh, he used to, he was like the drummer for it, right? Wait, he is? I believe so. Yeah. What? Yeah, I'm <laughs> I gonna double check that. this. Uh, he departed the group in 2003. For his so acting, so that's career. when he got into acting. Yeah, uh, but he was starting Good. acting. You know what? Good choice because he's like pretty well known name. He's in every um. What's that director that has like a very unique style? Wes Anderson. Yeah, yeah, he's in every Wes Anderson thing, and he just fits it so well. He does great jobs. Yeah. Oh my god, and he was the bad guy in um, Scott Pilgrim. 
Yes, he's like the I ultimate bad guy. <laughs> love Scott Pilgrim. <laughs> yes, and I was surprised to see him there too because uh, I don't know, but he's such a great actor. He does everything superbly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and just like this with uh, the spot, like he plays it, and he's kind of quirky and goofy, but then he pulls off lines like "This is intense." Uh, yeah, and so he goes back and forth fantastically. Um, but I like there's the spot the like kind of like the overall villain but then the actual antagonist the conflict comes from the other spider-man and they all have significant and moral and ethical reasons for doing what they're doing uh and like you said you are connecting with the parenting and i was connecting with the romance side of uh miles and gwen being romantically interested but they both have different perspectives of what's right and needs to be done and it's like i I care for both of them. I want to see them both win. And I just love it. Uh, it pulls me in. Yeah. <laughs> I going back to like the art artistic side of it. Yeah. One thing that I loved about it was the use of color and emotion. Mm. Like one of the first scenes in the beginning is like when Gwen is explaining like where she is, is at presently yeah. and the background and like the whole, like, pastel kind of like watercolor like shows a very feminine side a feminine vulnerability mm -hmm. and like the blue represent represent her sadness and everything like that and when she's having conflict with her father and then he kind of re reaches out to her like hey i just want to make sure that you're okay then the color changed from blue to like pink kind of showing like that hope and happiness and everything like that it was like wow mm -hmm. <laughs> like this is it incredible <laughs> and you know that's odd put up against juxtaposed uh with the soundtrack which uh incredible as well like i you know i have my favorite genres but there are all sorts there's some rap in it some r&b uh that i thought was all fantastic but with gwen um a lot of like punk soundtrack and so it's like these watercolors with the backsplash of the hardcore drumming and uh oh it just it was great <laughs> i loved it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i you know uh other characters uh they have the punk rock spider-man who has quickly yep. become my favorite spider-man um what, what was his name dobbs hobby hobby there we go hobby uh, -huh. uh i like him his line goes uh I am not a role model, but I was briefly a runway model. <laughs> um, and then Oscar Isaac playing uh, McGill, right? Miguel. McGill. Yeah. Um, yeah. Os and I knew he was great. coming to it because um, in the first one, there's an ending scene where he voices a Spider-Man and says something about, I have to do this myself or something. I can't remember. It was the ending credits of Into the Spider-Verse. Into the spider -Verse. And I, Oscar Isaac, I think is one of the most phenomenal actors out there right now. Uh, I would just love to see him in more stuff after seeing um, Ex Machina, Ex Machina. Uh, yeah, where he I heard great things about that. I haven't gone around to watching it yet, but it's... I heard amazing <laughs> things about it. It's good. Isn't, um, Dom Dom Hill Gleason in it too. Who's that? Isn't that the other guy in it? Uh, he was in Harry Potter. He yes. was also in Star Wars. I know he was uh, one of the guys in Harry Potter. Yeah, he was also in Star Wars too. So Oscar, Oscar Isaacs and him are in the same Star Wars trilogy. Oh, I know Oscar Isaacs in Star Wars. I, mean, I, I always forget what the other guy's in. Uh, and uh, what's her name? Uh, oh, I should remember her name. Haley Seinfeld? No... I'm gonna look in Star Wars or oh uh in S Machina. Oh, um Vikander. Alicia like, Vikander. Vikander. Alicia Vikander. Yeah, yeah. Uh I'm like the lady who is in uh the national music video. She was uh in a music video for a band called The National, and she plays like a baby, a girl growing up, a teenager, a middle aged woman, an older woman, and then dying. And she plays all the parts like perfectly. She's amazing. Uh but Ex Marina, like, I thought Oscar Isaac could only play sociopaths. 
because of that. I'm like, <laughs> he's going to get typecast. I'm like, he did an excellent job. Yeah. But I'm scared of him. Uh, I do. God, the first time that I saw him, he played like a villain. Actually, the first two times I saw him, he played a villain. He was a villain in um, Driver. Was it Driver with um, the guy who plays Ken? Fuck. In Barbie. Ryan Gosling. He wasn't. You're right. He was the bad guy. He was like the main bad guy in that one. Where like he was the boyfriend of the girl that the guy was yeah. trying to help. And then in um, Zack Snyder verse. Um, Apocalypse. No. Oh. What's well not not Snyder like I say Snyder verse in the sense that it's his movies because he always has the same style. It was that one where the, all the girls were like kind of in a dream world. Oh, um, Sucker Punch. Yeah, he and, was the bad guy, and so he was he was blue in Sucker Punch. And uh, he can sing too because he has a couple songs in that, right? Yeah, and uh, they're great. But uh, he was in he was uh, X Men Apocalypse. He played Apocalypse. Yep. And then he plays a good guy in Star Wars, and yeah, I was like. And then uh, there was another movie. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's about a high school reunion. And he's like a famous musician who goes back and falls in love with a girl. And uh, There's some other people in it, but like it kind of showed me like he can play a character with heart, too. <laughs> like, yeah. He's kind of like a chameleon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, he's great. So as a. Um, McGill as uh, Spider-Man uh, 2099, right? Yep. Um, he very authoritative voice it. and yeah. very like uh, emotional. Just uh, it worked for me. Yeah, like and God, so many things to uncover, like just like the different animation styles, the different like the different characters, like bringing in every type of Spider-Man into it in the multiverse and they they reference uh the symbiote symbiote the venom costume yeah. uh they don't bring it in because it's a story of itself uh but i like having it referenced and they even reference the spider-man movies which the spider-man movies uh homecoming for no way home uh have brought in the spider verse as well but it's kind of cool to see those being references well in this yeah and the best Easter egg was um, Donald Glover as the Prowler. You're right. Yeah, because he was the original inspiration for Miles Morales. And he actually was in the MCU with um, Spider-Man. What was the first one? Homecoming? Homecoming. Yeah, he was in Homecoming as um, as Miles' uncle. His uncle Aaron. So he was the Prowler in MCU, but he didn't become the Prowler, but he was that character. And there he was. Did did a cameo. It was amazing. Interesting. I, I need to watch Community. I think that's what this gets down to. <laughs> Honestly, you really should. I, mean, I know we've talked about this before because you were torn between Community and The Office. We watched the first episode of The Office together. I've watched a couple more since then. So okay. slowly. Well, slowly. <laughs> I would say, like, I guess it depends on your mood. If you're looking for something kind of just funny and grounded, I would go with The Office. But if you want something a lot more whimsical and a lot more um, meta and very, like, out there, uh -huh. if you it's it gets out there. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Like, they actually do um, a Law & Order episode uh -huh. where it's basically filmed in the exact style as, as Law & Order, huh. where they're trying to solve a mystery. It's fantastic. I need to watch it. I yeah, I love community. I've actually been um, so I in between Frasier when I just need something to when I need a break from Frasier, I'll throw on an episode of Community. Mm. It's great. <laughs> it livens things up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, back to Spider Man. <laughs> um. God, what else is there to like? Like, uh, do you have a favorite moment? Do you have like a, a noteworthy scene? You know, I think uh, it's fair to say that it's a to be continued movie. 
so um you know i didn't completely realize that when i watched it and i don't think that's a i think that's a fair spoiler to know that you're not going to see the whole thing uh but i probably will see the third one in theaters just because i'm that worked up about it um i love the ending um there's a chase scene that i thought was excellently done um but honestly i think uh him miles and gwen hanging out was just a superb uh interaction and spider bonding experience i agree with that it was very like take away the action take away the drama and everything like that just watching those two interact was so fun Mm -hmm. because like you can tell that there's a romance blooming but they are somewhat guarded at the same time because gwen knows what's about to happen yeah and Miles is a little bit like in the dark with everything. And he's just is looking for a connection. Like he was like, huh, he, Gwen ne- never left his mind after into the, into the spider verse. He had like his art book and everything like that, where he drew her and everything like that. He like remembered her and he always hoped t- to see her again. Mm-hmm. And then when they do, it's like, Oh, it's so amazing. <laughs> yeah. It was so stylistic too. Uh, the scene where they're like, on the underside of a statue the attention to detail of that how like their hair is coming even their yeah. facial features were starting to like rise sag, up as if yeah. they're upside down sag and everything like that's like or wow reverse of sag right what's the reverse yeah. of sag uh, uh, even out, out. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, but the, it, so cool yeah the attention to detail in all the animation was so fun to see it was so cool mm-hmm. very neat and now, uh, apparently, there's a new Spider-Man video game coming out pretty soon, right? Yeah. Uh, if I had time to play video games, I would. Uh, I might buy it anyways, but uh, it's got yeah. Miles and Venom in it, I believe. It's so funny. Like uh, Just be- before we started recording, Ryan and I were talking about video games. How we're at that stage in life where we can't invest a lot into huge storyline games. <laughs> Instead, we're investing in you, our listening audience. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> we it's don't have time you. to play video games because <laughs> we're doing IQ points. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's all I really had to say about it. Uh, it. It's fantastic. Love the artwork. Love the soundtrack. Love the characters, the acting, the voices, everything about it, the storyline. Um I am so excited for the third one. Um, And this is a pleasant surprise because I knew nothing about the first one going into it. And the second one I knew just a little bit as well. And I loved them both. Yeah. Like they did such a good job writing the storyline that you really don't need a lot of previous information on comic books or the spider-man series or anything like that Mm -hmm. you like they they do a really good job introducing the characters and explaining background information and it's just like you it's just you can start it at any level of comic book knowledge yeah and i i appreciate that too coming into the original 90s cartoon was like that as well and you know uh, just like in Big Bang Theory where Sheldon's like, well, you have to read this and this and this and this. Uh, comics are overwhelming. And I don't know if comic creators understand what that's like to be an outsider that, yeah, uh, it's like, how do I even begin? And these movies make a very, like, there's so much, but they put it together that just start at the beginning of the movie and you are fine. Yeah, and it was that. <clears throat> I guess since we're going into full spoilers, um, I had no idea that this was going to like, that there was a third one planned already. I had no idea. So by the time I got to that cliffhanger at the end and that twist at the end, uh-huh. which I won't say. I don't want to twist, twist end, but... I was like... <gasps> Holy <laughs> oh <my> shit! <laughs> yeah. yeah. So good. If you haven't seen it, just, just watch it. I know even if you're not into animated stuff, it's incredible. Incredible storytelling, incredible voice acting. It's all very, very phenomenal good. art. I yeah. <laughs> love it. Yeah. So check it out. Yeah. 
All right. Well, this was our bonus episode. Hopefully you liked it. Let us know. We welcome any feedback. Do you like us to do this every week? Maybe we could have a Big Bang Theory episode one week and then alternates with a bonus episode. A Star Trek or a Spider-Man or whatever it might be. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let us know. Well, thanks for viewing and we will see you next time. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye, everyone.